Okay, so the 1875 comes with these metal shells. This is for BBs and pellets, but uh, you put the pellet right on the end there. I use pellets. And then the BB either goes here or there's probably a magnet, I would think, down here. I haven't tried any BBs yet, but uh, the one thing that's good about pellets is if you notice uh, the length of the shell means that you can put any kind of pellet in here without getting jammed up in the forcing cone. Which reminds me to tell you guys about uh, CO2 pressures. You never want to fire uh, any type of ring magazine uh, revolver or any type of uh, CO2 gun on a weak CO2 because of the fact that once it gets to the forcing cone right here, if uh, you have low pressure, the pellet might be halfway between the forcing cone and the cylinder, which means you can break the pusher. The pusher is inside here. Now this one has a metal pusher, but some of them plastic ones like the Crossman Vigilante, you can end up breaking the pusher. So typically what you want to do is you want to count up 50 shots right away and uh, never fire this on a weak CO2. Uh, no CO2 gun that's got a ring magazine or anything like that, or like this one where you've got the shells. So there's still potential of that pellet going halfway and not completely going all the way through so that's what I'm saying so anyway uh, to load this you have to be in half cock cock it halfway and then you open this and then you put them in one at a time and uh, the real single actions now the thing you have to realize about real single actions is it wasn't safe to have six shots in the cylinder so what they would do is they would put one in skip one I don't know if I can do it here while holding it skip one and then put the other ones in except for one here well well you know what I'm saying skip one and then like that so what I'm saying is you'd have five beans in the wheel instead of six. So that on the last one, you wouldn't be resting on a live round. Because what would happen sometimes is they would hit the end of the hammer here with something. And since it was resting on a live round, it would go off. And the reason why I do it sometimes is just to remind myself of what a true single action would be like. So if you're shooting something like this now, see now it's on an empty, empty round here. You can see there's not one there. So, so yeah, you put the first one in, skip one, and then turn it. So the reason for that is uh, just get in the habit of doing that with the single action because of the thing is that what if you were shooting this pellet gun and then you actually handled the real single action and you uh, had that hammer all the way forward. Well, if you did something like that, it wouldn't be very safe because if you bumped it, it would go off. So that's why they carried uh, five instead of six. So yes, it's a pellet gun, but you... Sometimes you want to go through that routine just to remind yourself in case you really do shoot a single action because I have I have seen people load single actions before with all the shells and the hammer up like this and uh, even know of a guy that got killed in my town uh, because he didn't know much about single action revolvers and he had uh, the hammer resting on a live round and he bumped it somehow and he shot himself. 22 single action. That was his last day. So the wimpy 22 round everybody's talking about, well, it killed him. So, you know, he's, he survived for uh, probably a few minutes or whatever, and uh, they took him to the hospital. And by the time he got there, you know, it was pretty much, he was pretty much dead. So 
So it just goes to show you that, uh, you know, Wimpy 22, everybody's talking about these Wimpy 22 rounds. Uh, 22s are dangerous, and uh, you should treat any gun as it's dangerous anyway to begin with. But uh, he didn't understand that a single action, you know, that you can't have that hammer resting on a live round. You have to take one out. And that 22, I don't know how many shots that was, but uh, but he loaded them all up and he was carrying it around and and somehow he hit the hammer. So, but anyway, so this one here, this 1875, the safety is on the back here. There's a little switch right there. Okay, now it's back on safe. There's no CO2 in here. So it's safe already, but uh, so when you're working on this, what you do is you go half cock, but it won't allow you to do it until you first put it on fire, and then you go half cock. Once you get it on half cock, you can take the shells out. There's no need to take the cylinder out. If you do take the cylinder out, it's right here. Let's see where that is. Yeah, right here is where you would take the cylinder out. You'd pull up on that pin there. But there's really no reason to take the cylinder out. You don't even really have to take out the shells. I've loaded pellets in these shells before many a times without taking them out. So you could leave the shells in if you want. But it's on half cock, so you can work on it and do things with it. So, And uh, as far as cleaning, I don't think you would ever have to clean this unless you dropped it in the dirt or something like that. So when you're loading it, uh, you can load the pellets just by going like this. Just It gives you plenty of room to shove a pellet in there without even taking the shell out. Now, if you have a shell that's kind of stuck, here's your ejection rod right here. You can just pull on this you just give that a little hit and you can see it comes out so I'll show you the rest of it here okay there's that there's that pin for taking out the cylinder you have to pull on that pin but not just that you have to push on this black button here so the black button while pulling the pin and that releases this right here, the cylinder. And then if you have a shell that gets stuck in there, you can use this right here, the ejector, to get it out. But this is heavy. I think it's some kind of nickel finish, so it's extremely heavy. And it looks uh, pretty realistic. So that's the thing too is uh, when you're carrying this around, you don't want to be, you want to be careful because it it looks so real. You know, it doesn't look like a pellet gun when you first see it. So even though it is 1875 Remington. And once again, when you're putting the CO2s in, what I do is I turn really slowly until I hear a hiss. Now, some air guns that take CO2s, you won't hear a hiss. But what you want to do is uh, less is better. Less turning is better. You don't want to over-crank it at all when you're putting in the CO2. And I would take the CO2 out during the day after you're done shooting. I wouldn't leave it in for weeks at a time because what you're doing is you might be crushing that seal. And if you want to put a little silicone oil on the end of your uh, CO2 capsules, you can do that too uh, to keep that uh, seal lubricated. But there it is on half cock, and, uh, you know, you turn the cylinders. And uh, like I was saying, the forcing cone here, that's spring-loaded. Uh, when you're shooting this thing, if you shoot, uh, you know, some rounds on a weak CO2, what could happen is you could have a pellet halfway stuck in the forcing cone and halfway out the cylinder. That could be a possibility. Now this one is much stronger, like I said. it's There's a lot of metal parts in here, but you don't want to do that with the plastic Crossman Vigilante revolvers or the 357s because 
many people years ago used to wonder why their revolvers didn't work and uh, they would buy new rings and they'd find out they'd still have the same issue. Well, the issue is that pusher, that pusher down in there that turns the cylinder, what would happen, it was it would, it would mush up or break. So that, that would be the problem that they would have. But let me show you what this looks like here. There we go, 1875 Remington. And if I'm left, if I'm doing this left, what I like to do is put my finger right here. So there we go. She's on half cock. And at the end of the barrel, uh, it does have what appears to be, they were trying to make some rifling in there to give it a rifled look, even though it's a smooth bore. Kind of try to keep everything as original as they could get it. Let's see if I can put this bead on something. Let's see. I don't know if you can see that or not. There's that bead right there. So there's your front sight right there. It looks kind of like a bead in a way. Even though it's flat on the top here. Even though it's flat right there, when you do line it up, it does kind of have a bead appearance to it. That's how I did the accuracy test. I put the front post in that V and fired six shots. So there we go. CO2 is unloaded. Uh, the reason for that is uh, to make it safe. Just wanted to point it in different directions here so you can see it. You know, if I was pointing it at the ground the whole time, you wouldn't be able to see everything. So I want to make sure that you guys are able to see the whole thing. So anyway, there it is, the 1875, you guys, Remington. There we go. Okay, one quick note about the shell here. Here's a BB. But if I go like that, it doesn't have like a magnetic thing in there. So the BB, you would have to load from the top just like the pellet. So, so that plastic thing is kind of like a retainer. So there it is loaded with the BB and then a pellet you would do the same thing. But I like using pellets. So, but there it is. Okay, for the accuracy test, I used uh, the 7.33 Falcon, and uh, this is at 15 yards, six shots, and as you can see, that orange tape there, I put my front post right under there, and here's my rear sights. Not exactly the same size, but just to give you the general idea, I was aiming right under the orange tape, and these are where the, where the, the shots were falling. So they were falling about three inches down here, something like that. Which means that uh, this one and a half inch group here would be okay with pop cans, but the thing you have to realize with pop cans is at 15 yards, you're gonna have to aim at the top of the pop can to hit it on the bottom. So you might wanna have just a little bit hold over, over the top of the pop can to hit right here. So that's 15 yards. Uh, one and a half inches isn't too bad for, uh, you know, a smooth bore pistol. Um, it is a smooth bore, so you have to remember that. So that's at 15 yards, and then at seven yards, I did the same thing. At seven yards, uh, the drop is the drop is about one to one and a half inches drop, or something like that. If you want to take the center of the group, it would be about one inch, one and a half inch drop. 
So this here would be ideal for Dixie cups at seven yards. You can uh, set up a Dixie cup and same thing on the Dixie cup. You're going to have to aim at the top of the Dixie cup to hit it at seven yards. So overall the sights on this thing are, you know, it's pretty much going to dive right away. It doesn't really have any hop up or anything like that, but I would say that this would be a plinker for, you know, little drinking cups, some three ounce drinking cups at seven yards and uh, pop cans at 15 for the 7.33 Falcon, which is a lightweight pellet. You might even want to go lighter uh, to bring this, uh, to fix this trajectory right here, like the 556 H&N uh, Field Target Trophy alloy pellets. You might want to try them. That'll bring up the trajectory a little higher. So we're looking at pop cans at 15 yards, and we're looking at uh, little drinking, three ounce drinking solo cups at seven. And I was amazed that my groups were, on this one, were kind of like the same at the ones at 25 yards. So you could probably do a little bit better, I suppose, or I could if I did a few more shots. You know, if I did a few sets, I'm sure that would shrink up because that's half the distance right there. So anyway, that's the general idea of, uh, you know, what you can expect out of this, uh, eight, you know, this 1875. Okay, we got the wood penetration test, and the first one I did, number one there, that's the pile driver. That went in about an eighth of an inch. And let me show you what the pile driver looks like here. There it is right there. This is a 21 grain pellet. Might be just a little bit heavy for this revolver, but it did stick in about an eighth of an inch. Okay, that number two pellet, that's a Air Arms Falcon, 7.33 grain. This would be similar to your uh, Crossman Round Nose 7.9 grain pellets. This one's a little lighter, it flies a little faster. And it doesn't have that hard antimony, but it did penetrate almost flush with the pine board, which is very good. So once again, uh, this is a Air Arms Falcon pellet, 7.33 grain. Third one, or the one that's marked number 10, this would be your, your Crossman Penetrator, or the other name. Look at number 10 there. It's almost flush. It'd be kind of like your Crossman Penetrator or your RWS uh, Hyper Velocity or your Skinco. They're all pretty much the same pellet. And hopefully the camera clears so you can see it. There it is there. It might be a little fuzzy because I'm recording on 640p so I can upload these videos faster. So taking out all of the video bit rate so I can upload these videos faster. But as you can see it's about a quarter inch long and that sucker really went in there. So penetrated about a quarter inch of pine and it is in there well I'd say about a sixteenth or maybe even eighth of an inch before it penetrated the quarter inch. So, so these are Really good penetrating pellets here. Number eight there, that's a Crossman hollow point. You guys know what them look like. Let me see if I can grab one here. These ones uh, by Crossman, these ones got the antimony. These ones got the hard antimony in them. So they don't really bend up that much. But uh, these are the ones you get right down at Walmart. And that went in about an eighth of an inch. Same with the Falcon. Both of these went in about an eighth of an inch. And then the Sniper pellet went in a little bit more than an eighth of an inch. Let's see if I can find that one. 15 green Sniper. There's the 15 green Sniper pellet right there. It's number six is where it went in. I'm 
I'm not really worried about the focus. You guys can look these up on Pyramid Air. So, plus I have a pellet gallery on my YouTube channel where you can look at all the pellets. So there it is. So this one punched in pretty good. This 15 grain sniper right here. So that's the wood test right there. So what you learn from this is the pellets are sticking into pine at close range. This one's going in really good. The other two might be just a little bit heavy, but uh, they still penetrated. They're just a little bit heavier, that's all. Uh, longer distances, they'll probably, they'll probably have more energy. The only thing is these heavy ones aren't going to really get out there that far. So that's why you need the lighter ones to fix the trajectory so it can get out further. But anyway, so that's the pine board test there. Okay, for a soup can test, a lot of you love the soup can test. I was using this one here. This is the Skenko type pellet. RWS calls them hypervelocity. Crossman calls them penetrators, but they're pretty much all the same. This is an aluminum zinc alloy, by the way. It's uh, non-magnetic. I checked it, but it's hard. And it kind of turns gray, which means it's zinc. But uh, I read up about it, and I found out that it's not just zinc. It's got an aluminum alloy to keep it from fragmenting when it hits something. So it gives it a fair amount of strength to get through things like sheet metal and wood. But here it is right here. So... These are just Walmart soup cans that passed through the first side. Came out the second right here. Looks like a key hold. And then the second one made a dent. And then also I think this is 16 gauge stovepipe. You guys probably seen this before. What I did is I stamped out this stovepipe flat. It's a brand new sheet. And what I did is I shot it right here and you can see it made a crack. It didn't go through, but it, it bounced off, but it didn't make a crack. And I'll show you the other side here. So just about ready to get through. And uh, just to double check here, it's got a marking on it. GV16, so I'm thinking this means 16, or, oh no, maybe the gauge is different. I don't know what gauge this is, but, uh, yeah, it's your, uh, it's your basic stovepipe sheet metal. So that was pretty impressive with this pellet because it almost, you know, went all the way through, so that was kind of interesting. So I use this for lead pellets and different types, and, uh, just to see what will and what won't go through. Okay, also tried a lead pellet on the soup can and it made a really big dent. This is uh, the soup can that they uh, have at Walmart, so I don't know if the thickness is the same as the other brands, but uh, pretty good dent in there, but uh, wouldn't go through. Usually Usually you need a little bit over 400 or more to get through one side here of a soup can, about 425 for your medium weight round nose pellets. But here's the Falcon once again. It just got shot there and uh, didn't go through but made a big dent. So soup cans can be knocked over but uh, not quite enough to go through like that other pellet I showed you that went through uh, one of these. Okay, here's our stats for the crony and stuff like that on the 1875 Remington. If you look at the top there, number one, that's a pile driver, 21 grain. And uh, to read this chart, all you have to remember is this is weight. This is feet per second. This is energy foot-pounds. Um, anytime you see an X under 10, 15, or 25, that means a recommended distance, for instance, Anything that's real heavy is only going to work about 10 yards unless you have a lot of holdover. The lighter pellets will work at 15 and 25 yards. 
So I just did that uh, just as a recommendation. So you do want to shoot seven grain or lighter if you want to get out further. Um, and then this right here is the penetration factor. We can see that the Skenko or the RWS hypervelocity, which are kind of the same pellet, had the most penetration out of all the pellets. And that's and that makes sense because the uh, the way the pellets designed, uh, they are definitely penetrators. So, and Crossman calls them penetrators. So there's three different brands, but they're pretty much all the same pellet. So if you look here, you can tell energy foot pounds is pretty close to the same for everything right at muzzle. Um, obviously, the heavier pellets when you get out to further distance. Since they have a higher ballistic coefficient, they're going to have more energy foot pounds at longer ranges. In general, that's true for heavy round nose pellets like the 10.34, uh, the sniper, and the pile driver. And that's because of the fact that they are more efficient um, and they're heavy, which means they can buck that wind a little bit better. Um, something like the four grain here, even though that's very impressive for velocity 484. Um, by the time you get out to 25 yards, it's going to use, it's going to lose almost all of its energy because it's just too light. So I'll read off the pellets to you here. So if you take a computer screenshot on your computer, you can uh, take a snapshot of this and save it or write it down. Um, I'm going to read off the pellets so you know exactly what the pellet is. This is the H&N Pile Driver. This is the Air Arms Falcon. This is the H&N Field Target Trophy. This is the Beeman Wad Cutter. Um, this is the Air Arms Heavy Pellet. This is the H&N Sniper. Crossman SSP Pointed. Crossman Hollow Point. You can find them in Walmart just about everywhere. And then, of course, we got the Skenko, RWS, or Crossman. And these are usually 5.4, 5.3 grains, somewhere around there. So anyway, I'm going to keep the camera real steady so you can take a snapshot of these stats here. So it looked like it'll be fun for plinking 3 ounce drinking cups at about 10 yards. I think that th that's what this would be meant for. Just kind of having plinking fun at close range.